You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Visit PencilandPaperProductions.Podbean.com to find more great podcasts. Hello and welcome to As I Recall It, a podcast featuring stories, thoughts, and anecdotes about memories of the past. Are they told exactly as they happened? Probably not. Only as I recall it. When I was a kid, I enjoyed exploration. On days I was feeling adventurous, or days my father kicked me out of the house because it was too nice a day to stay inside and play video games, I would grab a stick, call to my dog Lace, and wander off. Now, seeing as I had plenty of places to roam, I would come across what seemed like unique locations and try to form them into my own personal hideaways. As I recall, my grandfather owned roughly 96 acres of land at one time, only five of which remains with the family as of this recording. This gave me so many areas to explore, and with my active imagination, there were numerous adventures out there to be had. I can remember what I would consider borders to this expansive world, even if I went outside them from time to time. One of the earliest spots I enjoyed going to was an old tobacco barn that was mere footsteps away from our home. It wasn't ours, and... I'm not even sure it was our grandfather's, but it was still a very interesting spot to explore. For a kid at the tender age of five, this barn seemed like a fortress with so many areas to explore. Also, being at that age, I wasn't really aware of what the aroma in the air was. It was just what the barn smelled like. Even though I remember playing there, no real memory stuck. Well, except for that fact that I'm convinced I lost some Star Wars figures out there. Speaking of barns, one of my most frequent spots to go to was my grandparents' barn, which was a few yards from their house. The barn had a uniqueness to it that, to this day, I couldn't tell you the purpose of every room. When I was a kid, it wasn't used very much anymore, so that too remained a mystery. I guess I could have asked my grandfather, but the question never came up. In the midsection of the barn, there was a ladder you could climb to reach a higher platform. I never quite understood its purpose either. Were it positioned on another end of the room... I could assume it was for hay delivery into the bottom section. Despite not knowing, my cousins and I used it for unsafe fun, which is another way of saying we would leap off of it. Luckily, no one broke a leg. Not only was there a barn, but a tool shed, filled with numerous tools that I shouldn't have messed with. There were animal pens that were no longer in use, but were filled with dry corn cobs that I assumed were there to keep snakes away. I don't know why, that's just kids' reasoning. There was even a junk shed, which was always fun for me because it remained locked most of the time. So getting in there every now and then was like a rare adventure filled with artifacts from the past. Keep in mind there were no priceless statues or rare paintings stashed away in there, but in my head, anything was possible. Behind the barn and the tool shed were two gateways to separate worlds, by which I mean a gate to the left and a gate to the right. The gate to the right led to the swamp, There was no real swamp, there were just two ponds and a spring where our water came from at that time. The spring is something I vaguely remember now, but it was always an interesting construct to me as a kid. Something that could be the entrance to a lost tomb. The left gate led to a forest. Again, not an actual forest, but it sounds cool. First you had to walk through an open field to reach the edge of the forest, but once you were inside, it would be easy to get lost. Luckily, I had a good sense of direction, so I could always find my way back. During the numerous times my dog and I explored this forest, we never found anything groundbreaking. One day, I explored, and I found my first empty turtle shell. It creeped me out. How does that even happen? No idea. Another time, I walked as far as I could, and I reached a fence. If you didn't think that an empty turtle shell was creepy, then what about a full potato sack hanging from a rope from a tree? What was in the sack? Beats me. Why was it there? Don't know. Did I leave immediately? You bet. Something like that screams backwoods maniac. Down the hill directly in front of my grandparents' house was a shallow gully. It was connected to a nearby creek and was full of junk. No idea why it was down there other than the fact that someone was looking to create their own dump. But being a dump made it interesting. There were numerous items to be found. I remember finding some sort of metal contraption. It had doors and drawers. Doors and drawers. I'm still not sure what it was, but it was fun for me. However, out of all these places, 
there was only one that I frequented the most. The creek. Down below my parents' house was a creek. The bridge crossing that creek from the main road to our driveway was infamous as it was nothing more than two metal beams. Most people were afraid to cross it, and others would approach it very, very slowly. My father was a pro at it, though. There was no slowing down or cautious aiming. It was pulling in and go. Anyway, the creek was full of adventure and memories. My cousins and I would explore it often, finding something new every time. We would even swim in it during the summertime, despite the unsanitary nature of it all, but it was more about fun, not sanitation. One evening, just walking around, when we hit a patch of tall grass and startled a black snake hiding underneath. It leapt up and hissed at us, and to be honest, my memory was a blur for the next few moments, no doubt because that's all I saw in that time since I took off running as fast as I could. I enjoyed the creek so much that I established one section of the creek as my own personal fort. I could stash my supplies, keep a lookout for my lookout tree, and have a little sanctuary to call my own. I loved my fort. So much so that I made a comic based around it. But that's a story for another time. I probably enjoyed my time there up until the point that I fell out of my lookout tree. Now, if you've never fallen out of a tree, I don't recommend it. And I don't mean fall off a branch and hit the ground. I mean fall from the top, hit every branch on the way down, and then hit the ground. That's doing it properly. Too bad cell phones weren't a thing then yet, as I'm sure the video would have gotten tons of views on YouTube. Oh, and by the way, I was fine. Just sore and bruised. It's been a long time since I visited these spots. I'm sure if I asked the current owners, I could roam around these areas again and see if it stirs up any memories I'd forgotten. Maybe even take a few pictures. I miss my hideaways. They were a place to get away from it all and relax, to forget the cares of the world and just explore the unknown. As kids, we are so eager to grow up, and then as adults, we see how tough it can be. I'd give anything to have another hideaway that I could just run to and take me back to those days. An easier, simpler time. Even though I have vague recollection of the early days of my childhood, the year that sticks with me the most is 1990. At 10 years of age, a seed was growing inside my brain that would sprout into other ideas that would eventually grow into an entire world that exists inside my head to this day. What's interesting about this is that I'm sure the spark of creativity existed in me in some way before this point. As I recall, only a year prior, I'd written a short story for a Halloween-themed project in school and won first place for it. I may be mistaken, but I would have to consult my teacher for that year, but I'm sure she wouldn't remember either. Anyway, during 1990, I had a notebook that became my drawing journal. Simply named my book of drawings that housed any and every drawing that I did at the time. It was clear to see what my interests were at the time, as it was littered with crude drawings of Spider-Man, Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Dick Tracy, King Kong, Godzilla, and so on. One day, for some reason I genuinely cannot remember, I began drawing a maze. Not your typical placemat maze you get for the kids at a restaurant, but a maze that was structured for a different purpose. It was winding paths full of traps and treasure. It had shortcuts and warp zones, hidden keys and extra lives. In essence, it was a video game on paper. Playing it in real life would be the equivalent of a D&D match, only taking much less time, which is something I hadn't really considered until now. I kept this drawing in my book for some time until I decided to make another, where... I would assume, was trying to top what was done previously and make it more challenging and treacherous. Eventually, I continued on with a third maze which I labeled impossible because the stakes had to be higher. Looking at these designs, there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for the structure. I just drew every twist and turn that looked suitable. What made Part 3 unique was the inclusion of a boss fight and a subsequent ending, giving it a simple video game style ending. Again, for reasons I can't remember, I continued creating these mazes. I was drawn to this world that began forming in my head. Each maze brought in new characters, which began leading into the foundation of a narrative. Not a solid narrative, mind you, as I was only ten. But despite that, 
As each subsequent chapter was created, the story was fleshed out more and more, showing that this character, who was me, was constantly being dragged into this world and forced to escape these mazes, with all of it being orchestrated by this demon and his minions. Over the years, I've thought more and more about this story and what it could be with a little more thought. I've considered telling the story minus the mazes and even wrote out an outline of that version of the story. However, over the last year, the idea of the maze and what it could represent is much deeper and more fascinating to me. I never knew it at the time, but Stephen's Wacky Maze was the beginning of something that would become much larger than I ever imagined. This world would expand with new characters, new locations, and stories being told from within. What are these ever-expanded ideas, you may ask? Well, that's a story for another day. If you'd actually like to see the original drawings of Stephen's Wacky Maze series, go to www.facebook.com slash theworldinmyhead and find the album Mark Stephen's Wacky Maze. And be sure to read the description of each page as it will give you a deeper insight into the series. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed our story. Remember, if you'd like to support this and other shows, you can go to patreon.com slash pencilandpaperproductions or pencilandpaperproductions.podbean.com and click become a patron in the top right-hand corner. You can find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network found on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts. Thank you once again, and I hope you'll join us again next time. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.